anti-Soviet, you can bet today anti-Russian and anti-Chinese propaganda units from those states. Yeah, absolutely. Also, Don Scalisi is also uh, in. She was also hired by McKinsey and Associates, the former home of Pete Buttigieg, CIA Pete. Um, but you just take a look at anything Reuters publishes about Venezuela. It's just like a straight up press release. Or, or, or it, it, it's, it's, it, it functions in the same role as if the CIA issued a press release. And they'll often refer to like internal PDVSA documents. So how do they, you know, they have a source inside the state oil company who's like, an asset who's just feeding them documents so that they can tell the public, which has very little interest in this, that Venezuela is still managing to export oil. But they're not saying, you know, why is it an issue that they are not allowed to export oil? And what does that do to its population? So the effect of this kind of uh, management, I mean, I, I call, it's it really like I wrote a called the management of savagery. This is the management of democracy. These hands are slipped in to media institutions and other institutions in order to fulfill the recommendations. And it's not some conspiracy. I'm not saying like they're reading this book and then acting it out. It's just how things, how the security state functions. But the recommendations put forward by Samuel Huntington in his book, The Crisis of Democracy, where he actually calls explicitly for the de-democratization of the American workplace and media uh, through, you know, essentially great propaganda, managing society much more carefully because in the 1960s and early 70s, democracy exploded and he, there was what he called an excess of democracy. And so now as the U.S. lurches into a new Cold War against the wishes of most of its population, which is receiving next to nothing from its government, a new Cold War with Russia and China, which the U.S. absolutely initiated along with its allies, the pressure for managing democracy and suppressing dissenting opinions, narratives, and factual reporting is going to grow more extreme. That's why we're seeing so much management of Silicon Valley, which is just essentially intertwined with the U.S. intelligence apparatus of social media, suppression on social media. But there's also what you mentioned, Ben, the D-notice, which is a longstanding practice of the British security state. And it can be impo imposed in an unofficial way in the U.S. Uh, with a phone call to an editor. After this Kripal poisoning, there was a D-notice imposed on the entire British media to prevent them from mentioning the name of his MI6 handler, Pablo Miller. Pablo Miller was later revealed to be involved in the Integrity Initiative, this secret British military intelligence troll farm, which was exposed by hackers. And he was also revealed to be a business associate of none other than, none other than Christopher Steele at Orbis Intelligence. So there were a lot of just strange connections there uh, that illuminated this, the intrigue behind this poisoning that the British state actively suppressed. And you have people like Jess Brammer, Chris York's editor, participating in that program. This is about basically preventing the excess of democracy from coming to bear. Yeah, and I should also mention Max. Max mentioned the Trilateral Commission. Well, you know who's also not. a current I, member I of the Trilateral. <laughs> you did I not. I did not. Oh, yeah, you, you mentioned Samuel Huntington and Samuel Huntington. Okay, well, for, for the I think that was for the, the Trilateral Commission. Head. Samuel Huntington, the the kind of conservative Harvard political scientist, helped co. He is most famous for writing the book The Clash of Civilizations. But he also, in the 1970s, he co-published this report, The Crisis of Democracy, in which the Trilateral Commission called for curtailing democracy. That's what Max was acknowledging there. They said that there was a crisis of democracy, and that crisis was there was too much democracy in the United States and in Western Europe. And you know who's currently a member of that same institution, the Trilateral Commission? Well, the new labor leader, Kara Starmer. As Matt Kennard, a friend of ours, a great reporter, he published for us, at the gray zone. So, I mean, these links, these same institutions that 
during the first Cold War were actively involved in campaigns to, in their own words, curtail democracy, are still involved today. And I think it's fair to assume that they're still involved in curtailing democracy. It's 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 not a stretch. And, and, and Starmer, Starmer was also the prosecutor of Assange. Uh, I mean, that article, it's so important. That's such an important article by Kennard uh, because it il illustrates what Starmer's real purpose is. He is just essentially a sort of like a marionette for the British security services to reimpose control over the Labour Party after Corbyn gave, brought in 100,000 new members. It's exactly what we're talking about. Jeremy Corbyn represented the excess of democracy. And through this, the, the management team into crisis, in comes Starmer, someone we've never heard of. He's got all the charisma of a filing cabinet. He's, you know, there's nothing compelling about him at all. And Kennard unearthed all of these meetings that Starmer was having with Eric Holder. They were obviously talking about Assange. He was the point man. Starmer's got, he's, he's gotten really quickly to be fast friends with the Israel lobby, the new British ambassador from Israel, Sipi Hotavelli, she's like just can someone who's considered a straight up fascist in Israel. She was part of the orange cell that tried to fight the removal of settlers, the most fanatical settlers from the Gaza Strip. I mean, she's from the far right fringe and she's someone that Keir Starmer's palling around with after signing off on the fake anti-Semitism campaign on Corbyn. So what you have essentially is someone in charge of the Labour Party who is... Who is he? I mean, what does he represent? We know who Boris Johnson is. Boris Johnson is like someone who rose to, obviously he represents many of the same interests, but he's also sort of an independent politician who has his own personality and charisma and base. Who is Keir Starmer? What, 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 what's going on here? It's, he's just a face for the management team.